What's up guys, it's Wyatt from the bottom bracket. Today we're gonna to be doing a lower fork service on a 2018 RockShox Yari. Um, this is on my Kona Process 153. Okay, for doing our lower leg service, we have all my seals here and stuff I had ordered. These are some of the tools that you're gonna need. Basic multi-tool, a pick, a syringe, a shock pump, um, a torque wrench, some rubbing alcohol works really great for cleaning all the old oil off of the forks. And then for our foam seals, you're you're supposed to use RockShox oil for the foam rings, but I've been reading a lot of good things about this Fox 20 weight gold. So I'm going to go ahead and try that. My bike's a little older used and not under warranty. So if yours is under warranty, I would probably go ahead and just stick with the RockShox version of this. Um, I also have a hammer, but yeah, this should be all the basic tools you'll need to get the job done so let's let's get at it but to start off we're gonna go ahead and take off the front wheel which i've already done and now i'm going to take off the brake caliper you're gonna need a five millimeter allen key for this using the uh, multi-tool so it's taking a little longer than usual <laughs> eventually all right so now once your brake uh, calipers off you can go ahead and just set that out of the way let it hang if you got a spacer or an, uh, an adapter like I do here it'd probably be best to take that off set it out of the way so you don't lose it so I'm just gonna go ahead and let this hang out of the way and now once that's done we're gonna go ahead and move over to your rebound setting it's best if you go ahead and count your clicks to make sure you know where it was set up prior to taking all this apart so it'll be quick and easy to get back to it so I know on some of the older models, there is a little set screw that holds this in place. So you might want to double check, make sure before you start just pulling on this so you don't break anything and set this somewhere where you're not going to lose it. So now we're going to take that Allen key that we were using earlier and open up this air valve at the top. You don't do that because then you'll lose it. All right, so once you drop your, your air cap up here, you're going to take your Allen key and before you do this, make sure you check your PSI. It always just makes it a little easier when you're going back, tear it up at the end. Um, so I had already checked mine prior to this, but go ahead and let your air out slowly. All right, so now that the air is out, now we're gonna go ahead and take apart these two Allen keys here on the bottom, which will be a five mil. And you're just going to want to loosen these, I don't know, probably four or five turns. You'll see why here in a second. You don't want to take them all the way out because it's going to be kind of stuck in there. You're More than likely, you're not going to be able to pull these lower legs off directly. A lot of times what you have to do is just kind of leave them threaded in there a little bit. And this is where that hammer um, comes into play. This The, the multi-tool is probably not best for this, but... If you have some regular Allen keys, it'd work a lot better. But you're just gonna wanna set it in there and then give it a little tap with a hammer to break everything free. And you're gonna wanna, I don't think you see it in the video, but I have an oil pan down here waiting. So you're gonna wanna have something down there to catch the oil once this does break free, cause it'll start seeping out. So now I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew these. Again, set them somewhere you're not gonna lose them. So then you're gonna try to go ahead and slide these off. And if they don't come off, like you're gonna to wanna to pull on them, don't ever hammer up here. Like if they don't wanna come off and you're pulling on them, like that's really tight. So I might have to thread these screw bolts back right back in and then do it all over again and hit it with a hammer and loosen it back up. So now I'm going to go ahead and see if I can slide. See, now they're coming off so much easier. If you were to just yank on that, you might mess something up. So it's best to take your time on doing that part. I have an oil pan, like I said. I'm kind of overshooting the oil pan right now, but let those drain for a second. You're going to want to look, see if you can see in there. Right here's your seal. You want to make sure they're in good shape. No cracks or chips or anything. Just, if the rubber looks really worn out, you're going to want to go ahead and replace that. And then just below there, there's a foam ring. And that's where that pick comes into play. So I'm going to grab my pick and I'm going to go in and just gently pull that foam ring out. 
As you can see, this one's actually not too bad. I was expecting it to be a lot worse, but it's definitely got a lot of dirt and grime on there. And if you wanted to, a lot of times people can just take a little bit of rubbing alcohol, soak it in there, clean it off, lube it back up, and you reuse it again, as long as it looks like it's still in savable condition. Um, since I bought the kit, I bought the whole 200 hour service kit, and so I'm just gonna replace it. See, this one's about the same. I have this, it's just like an old like roll-on paint <laughs> extender that was broken and so I have a paper towel kind of fixed through there that I can kind of go down and just kind of clean everything out and so what I'm using is just a 15 millimeter wrench and I'm going to use the, the rounded side and I'm going to put it down inside here and just gently try to pry out that dust seal and it's not going to be easy especially if it's old but you just want to be really careful and see that one came out now once i have both of those out i can get in there with the tool that i have if you had something smaller and you didn't need to replace those it's fine i planned on replacing them anyways now i should still be able to use the tool that i wanted to to get down in there and clean so i'm gonna do that on the other side i'm gonna pull that dust seal off first time doing this as well so we're kind of learning along together <laughs> all right finally there it goes so now basically I'm just going to go in with the dowel that I made that probably is still too big. Um, if this doesn't work, like I said, I'm going to find something else and go in. Oh, there we go. Perfect. You just want to get in there and wipe it because I could tell just from my seals and looking down in there, there's a bunch of dust. We are based out of Arizona, so there's a lot of dust out here. And I had seen on um, another video they used a little bit of rubbing alcohol. They had it in a spray bottle. And just kind of misted it down inside there to get rid of like all the old oil and the gunk. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that because I don't have a spray bottle. And I don't really want to just drench the inside of my lower legs with rubbing alcohol. They don't look that bad. But no, nah, it looks it looks clean to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and send it. So now that I got all my seals, everything's out of the fork. I cleaned the insides. I'm going to take a little bit of the rubbing alcohol and just hit the outside. A little bit on the inside where those foam rings were. I'm going to wipe down just like along the edge here where the new seals are going to go just to make sure I got all the the old dust and grime out of there. And then after I do that I'm going to go ahead and just take the leftovers hit the outside because there's when I first pulled that off a lot of the oil kind of got on the lower legs just kind of wipe that off a little bit so it'll be nice and clean when we go to put it back together. All right, so now that we've got everything taken apart, everything cleaned out, I'm gonna go ahead and place in the new uh, fork seals. And these already kind of come pre-greased. I don't know if you can see all those little white lines in there. Keep pressing them down slowly. You don't wanna use a screwdriver or anything like that's gonna puncture it, because then kind of defeats the purpose of putting a new seal in. But you want, you want this bottom lip to get as flush as you can to, um, to the lower leg here. See how this side, I don't know if you can see it on there, how it's sitting flush. I still have a ways to go on this one. And so I'm just gonna keep pressing down a little bit on each side, kind of go right then left until I can get it to seal all the way down. All right, and so now that's, that's seated. As you can see, it's pretty flush on there. And so what I did, I know I had talked about earlier using the syringe when putting the foam rings back in. I ended up just using the bag that it came in. There was no hole, so I just put a tiny bit of that fox oil in there and then kind of just kind of mushed it around until I got everything covered completely. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out. Of course, I'm out of gloves. So it can get messy. Make sure you have some shop towels around if you have some. If you don't, it'd be a good idea to get some. You're going to see there's a little perfect little ledge where this fits in on the inside. You just want to make sure there's no creases. I know you're probably not going to be able to see it in the video, but now it's in there. It's sitting where it's supposed to. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for the other side. All right, and just like that, that one's into place where it should be. All right, now once that once that is all done, it'd be a good idea to take a rag with some of that rubbing alcohol that we used earlier and just clean your state <coughs> stations. So that's all cleaned up, ready to go. You're just gonna take your lower legs, 
And you're gonna to wanna to slide them on real easily. There we go. Like I said I'm not a professional. This is my first time doing this on this bike, so we're learning together. So now that it's on, you're gonna to wanna to slide it all the way up until you see, you don't want it to be flush down here. You don't want those rods that the screws were into to be all the way against the bottom because you're gonna to have to put a little bit of oil um, down in there for your lower legs. All right, so this is where the syringe comes into play. We're gonna add 10 milliliters. RockShox calls for 0 30 weight, 10 mil on each side. Like I said before, I'm gonna be trying out the Fox 20 weight gold. And so basically you put 10 mil in your syringe and you're gonna kinda angle it down so you're not hitting that shaft and it just spray right back out. And you're gonna do that on both sides. I'm actually not gonna do that right now because I'm planning on doing um, the Debon Air upgrade kit shortly after this video. So I'm gonna have to take all this back off anyways. Once you, you get your oil in, you're gonna slide these down a little further you're going to put your, your bottom bolts back on and those are going to be torqued down to 65 inch pounds. Put your rebound cap back on and just put some air in it and you're ready to go. That's a lower leg service for you for a 2018 RockShox Yari. Um, stay tuned if you guys are wanting to do a 200 hour service or the Devon Air upgrade kit, the 2021 Devon Air. Um, I'm going to be doing that shortly after this. That's why I didn't. Or that's why I'm not doing the oil and everything right now because I'm going to pull this back off to continue for our next video. Just make sure to like and subscribe our channel and stay tuned.